Splendor of a king Hold the majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide trembles at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and oh we'll see how great how great is our God, how great is our God, sing with me how great is our God, and oh we'll sing how great, how great is a God. The heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. And we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling. At your word, and we are and we are responding to your love, my God. How great you are! How great, how great you are, my God. How great you are! How great, how great you are. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great, my God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, I sing your God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my so I sing your God to me. How great thou art. How great thou art. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God.
and how great you are, how great, how great you are. God, we celebrate your greatness today because you are great and you are greatly to be praised and we bless you and we magnify you and you are just awesome. Lord Jesus, as I, as I try to um, preach today about what you, the two topics you, you, you um, minister to my heart, Lord Jesus, help me to say exactly what you did the way you want me to say it. Help me to just be a pen and you be the writer of this sermon. Help people to really understand what you're trying to communicate today. And Lord Jesus, I as your willing servant, servant bow my bow my head before your feet. And God, I pray that you will just speak to me and speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. So hi guys. Um, thanks for joining me today. Um, I have two topics to talk about. First, I'm going to talk about, um, my first topic is called Peace Be Still, and my second is called, um, Come Together. Um, so, um, for Peace Be Still, I, I, um, the other day heard um, I read, I should say, about these animals who got, who got diagnosed with the coronavirus. Um, they were in the Colorado Zoo, uh, two hyenas and 11 lions. And you know that this virus is going on, has been going on for about two years now. And I'm not going to get into the virus, whatever, because I know there's some debate debate there. And um, these videos are never about debate and whatever. Um, but they're about to, uh, they're, they're meant to uh, preach the word of God to, to the hurting and to the lost. And that's all I endeavor to do. Um, so... I'm going to leave that alone, but um, hearing about these animals that were diagnosed with this coronavirus, my heart, first of all, I was devastated for these little guys, and I'm also devastated for all these people that are dying around the world, and, uh, uh, like all this destruction that this virus has caused around the world. And I started um, getting a little anxious um, about uh, what was happening, what was going on. And uh, the Lord said, uh, in the midst of my being anxious, the Lord said, peace be still he said he brought me back to the familiar story where jesus was in the, the boat with his disciples he was tired he was sleeping he just finished preaching so he was re relaxing he was chilling and then there was the storm that uh took pl place where the wind started howling and the rain started coming so they they woke him up they're like jesus jesus we need you we need you this we need you there's a storm and all jesus said when he um got up and got uh to the front of the boat was peace be still and and that's what he was saying to me uh, today. He said, not today, but 
when I was thinking about these animals who got diagnosed with uh, coronavirus. Uh, and I was beginning to panic because now it hit humans, it hit animals. What's it going to hit next? Um, but as I was beginning to uh, kind of panic in my mind, the Lord said, peace, be still. He said, he said, I need you to tell them to speak peace in their storm. Uh, he said, he said, I need you to, to say uh, to your storm, and I need you to tell everybody else to say to their storm, peace. So whatever your storm is today, um, he, the Lord is saying, speak peace to it. Speak peace to your finances. Speak peace. Because if you speak peace, it automatically speaks disorder. Chaos breeds... No. If you speak peace to something, it automatically brings order to it. And then if you speak chaos to something, it automatically brings disorder. So... The Lord says, what, wherever you're struggling, whatever you're struggling with, speak peace, be still. He, he said, and watch the, the storm calm with strategy and, and in your heart, in your soul. It may not get better right away, but it will speak peace in you and that way it'll clear your mind to deal with whatever you have to deal with it's it's not that speaking peace um to the storm um makes the storm go away but it clears your mind enough to bring to bring st strategy to the situation. It, peace, peace in your storm doesn't mean uh, it goes away. It means it brings clarity and strategy to it. So you can, so you can think clearly enough to, uh, to do what you need to do to, uh, to, uh, um, to fix your storm and not really fix it, but to calm it a little. So, for example, if you're freaking out about your finances and you speak peace to your financial storm, the storm, the financial storm may not get, won't, probably won't get better, but what it will bring is a clarity of my mind to you so you could be able to figure out well do I need to pay off this debt or it will give you strategies on how to manage your money better it will bring people into your life like financial advisors to to help you with the storm to help you with your financial storm so speaking peace to something won't automatically get rid of it, but it will um, it will clarify it, and you'll have strategy and know what to do. That's what speaking peace to your storm will do. And sometimes it will get rid of it, but most times it'll bring clarity to your storm. Uh, even if clarity is, don't worry, I'll handle it, I've got it handled. Because sometimes that's what clarity is. Sometimes in clarity, God will say, I've got it handled. Sometimes in clarity, God will say, do this and that. So he's, he says, in every situation, speak peace. So right now... 
with whatever situation you are facing, I declare right now, peace, be still. Peace, be still over your finances. Peace, be still over the health crisis. I pray over COVID, peace, be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. And I declare out of this peace, will come strategy, will come knowing, will come empathy, will, peace will set things to rights that were chaotic. Remember I said, peace brings order and chaos brings disorder. So that's the first word he wanted to give you today. And then last night, um, the Lord and I were talking about together and what it means to come together. And he says, it's less about proximity than it is about, it's, he said, it's less about proximity than it is about connectivity. So, uh, when people say, oh, I wish we could get together again, I wish we could get together again, what they're basically talking about is, I wish we could be in the same building, I wish we could see each other and whatever. But the Lord said to me, togetherness is more about uh, connectivity than than proximity so you could be in the same room with each other and not be together so having a church full of people doesn't mean you're gathered together it just means you're in the same space and he's saying but gathering together is not about space. It's about um, connectivity. Are you connected? And you can be connected to someone uh, biologically and not connected to them in any other way. You could be connected to someone physically and not be connected in any other way. Have you ever been in a room full of people? You're in a room full of people and you felt the loneliest that you've ever felt in your life because there's people in, in the room but there is no real connection with them. Um, like like you can be in a marriage and not be together. I uh, you could you could have kids together and not be together. Like you could talk about well, we need to take our son to soccer and our daughter to gymnastics or whatever. You could talk about all the mundane things of life and still not be connected. Still not be connected. Still not be together. I think when he, like so, now when the Lord says come together, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. I think he's, he's meaning not so much physically, but emotionally, spiritually, and all that. Um, a real connection. You could be with somebody in the same room, but still not be connected to them. You could still be together with thousands of people and feel so alone. 
And the Lord wants people to experience real connection. And you could not not be in a room with someone, but feel so connected to them, you think that you've been friends forever. I have a couple, I have a couple of really good online friends. Like, I have my friend Melissa. I have my friend Drew. I have my fr friend Mar Marissa. Uh, we, we have never met physically, but I feel that they're some of the most closest friends ever because I feel connected because we've shared together We've laughed together, we've cried together, we've discussed together, and all of our relate, all of my relationships with um, Melissa, Marissa, and Drew, they're different, but it's still a connection, and we've never been in the same room together. So, real connection doesn't mean in the same room, I think. Real connection, real togetherness doesn't mean like you're in the same, could be in the same room, it doesn't have to be. And the Lord is saying, it's time to not change our definition of together, but it's time to uh, reevaluate in our, and adjust our, um, definition of together like because often we think together is in the same room when we, we can be in the same room and not be together at all you could be in worship with someone thinking about oh my gosh i have to get bread at the grocery store after church the other person could be beside you thinking lifting their hands and you know doing all the outward things, but thinking, oh, did I, need, did I leave the oven on? Or, oh, I have to pick my son up after school. And, oh my gosh, my sister got diagnosed with cancer. I have to help her arrange um, child care for the kids because I can't go because I'm working. So this is all in one service. This is all in one service. All these people can be thinking this, but you're thinking as the preacher, oh, we're together. When we are not together, we're in the same room, but we are not together at all. I'm thinking about the, uh, uh, the greatness of God, and I'm thinking about what we're singing, and I'm grateful for the greatness of God, where the person beside me is wondering what's for lunch after church. So he's saying to adjust our definition of together. Um, the, the church that I go to online, it has millions of people a week tuning in. And um, people would say, well, you're not together because you're alone in the room. But the way I think of it is I'm, I'm not alone at all. I'm worshiping with, with millions of people. And I think if we adjust, not totally get rid of, but adjust our definition of being together, it will open up a whole world of, of things. And I know nothing beats touch or whatever, but I think if we adjust our definition slightly, not get rid of, but adjust it slightly, the Lord is going to open up a whole um, new, new way of being together. And I think that John 17 quote that Jesus prayed before he went to the cross, Oh, that he may be one, that, that his children may be one. I think it will be a possibility. 
I see churches bringing online and in person together, like in a really powerful way. I see, I see um, staff, uh, in person staff talking with online staff and just uh, being together in heart and mind and, and spirit and just this new form of uh, togetherness and being together it's wonderful and I, I think that's one of the things the pandemic has forced us to reevaluate our our definition of being together um, and I think that's why sometimes online dating works so well uh, because they may not be together physically in the same room, maybe not in the same country, but they're together in heart and they're together in spirit and they're together in soul, they're together in mind. And that's what the Lord has, has wants me to share with you today. I hope that wasn't too much. I was very nervous this morning about my sermon, so, but I hope it helped. Um, thank you, Lord, for just being with us today. Thank you, Lord, for being the great God you are. Thank you, Lord, for calming the nerves and letting me extrapolate your word the way you wanted me to. And thank you, Lord, for being with us and teaching us about being, um, telling our situations to be still and uh, teaching us about togetherness, that it's not about proximity, that it's more about connectivity. Um, thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are, how great, how great you are. The heavens are telling, telling the weird how great you are. And we are responding to your love. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. And sings my soul, my Savior God, to be How great thou art. How great thou art, then sing my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. My God, how great you are, how great, how great 
See you next week, guys. Bye.